we're going to go into the lower extremity. Part of the appendicular skeleton is we have the upper extremity which comprises of the pectoral girdle, but down here we have what's known as the pelvic girdle. Now I have a, a whole pelvis here which is actually an articulation with sacrum that articulates to the pelvic girdle. Each side of the pelvic girdle has what we call os coxae. The os coxa, singular, is comprised of three bones. The ilium, that part which you sit down on, right here, and the pubis. As you can see how it articulates up front both pubic bones, the pubis, pubic is just the adjectival name, the pubic bone articulates at the pubic symphysis right here. All three bones have a common area. This depression, this depression is where the femur, the thigh bone, connects to the hip bone. You probably heard the thigh, thigh bone connected to your hip bone. This depression in the os coxa, see ilium bone, ischium bone, and pubis bone of the os coxa. Also, the depression, we call it the acetabulum, which means acid basin. Like if it were a drip of acid, it would, in limestone, it would erode out into a little basin. Acetabulum. Now, I will use a little artistic license. One of my students a long time ago, I'll give her credit. She jokingly said, if that popped out, your ass be tumbling. <laughs> but anyway, just uh, because it sounds like. And I thought that was kind of clever and funny. A lot of times you'll utilize mnemonics, things sound like, since anatomy is a descriptive science, it's describing how things look and sound and how they appear. They just happen to be anchored in Latin and Greek. Well, let's continue. This would be considered a hip bone, os coxae. Another name they used to term this, they called it the anominate bone, which means the unnamed bone, or the non-named bone. But if you label it, how can it be non-named? So we, are, we will use os coxae. The thigh bone. We have a left and right. They're very large. They have a head, a brown ball. That's the head. Articulates into the acetabulum. Bears the weight. If you look at left and right, notice the heads are pointed medially. into the posterior view and towards the more distal 
end, the articulating surface, these are the condyles, notice how they slope to the posterior. It kind of looks like it has a rear end, posterior. This is by observing how they appear. Posterior view again. You can start to distinguish left and right. The bone continuing down, going from proximal, which means at the attached base, further in the distance, distal, we're going to articulate the femur on top of the tibia. The tibia, these are long bones, and the tibia also has articulating condyles. These are concave, where the femur is convex. When you flex your knee, when you extend your knee to a standing position, your knee locks, you're standing. The tibia, if you can use your imagination a little bit, a very long bone, like a large capital T. I always think like I'm drawing the letter T for tibia. Patella, the kneecap, Rides right here. The articulating surface of the patella is longer on the lateral side. Think longer lateral. Also, it has a little point that points inferior, which we call this distally. And you can always look at it on the table here have a left and right patella, I am pointing the little points away from me and I notice that they both tip to the side that they are. This happens to be a right patella and this one is a left patella. On this left tibia, we can to show you contrast to a right. If I go towards the ankle, I notice that there is a large aspect that comes medially and down. We call this area the medial malleolus. All right now, just remember it is on the inside medial aspect. If you've ever clicked your ankles together, that is where that would happen. Like so, standing. You would click on the medial aspect. Medial malleolus. The head of the tibia at the top on the shaft sticks out to the front. When you're kneeling down on a hard surface, you're usually resting on this hard area. Place your hands on your, the kneecap on your palm of your hand, on your knee, and your middle finger, you can feel that large process. It is called the tibial tuberosity. On the leg, this is the leg bone two of them, leg bones. We have one thigh bone, femur, two leg bones. The medial leg bone, tibia, to the lateral aspect we have a small slender bone known as the fibula. The fibula has the head at the superior aspect and the lateral malleolus at the inferior aspect. 
That would be proximal end is head, distal end, lateral malleolus. These are a little difficult to actually show left and right. I do not have a disarticulated one. But if you study this carefully, I'll show a lateral view. The lateral malleolus has a sloping to the posterior aspect. And on the medial side of the bone, there's an actual notch you can palpate. That means you can feel right here on the posterior medial inferior aspect of this bone is a small notch that is how you can tell left and right fibula bone I also have with me a disarticulated ankle bone on the right So we can see that the ankle bones are known as tarsal bones. The foot bones are known as metatarsal bones. The toes are known as phalanges, individual segment phalanx. The tibia articulates on a tarsal bone known as the talus. I have one right here, the talus. It has a pulley shaped structure articulation known as a trochlea. This is so that we can go up on our tiptoes or walk on our heels. Plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. If we walk on our heels, the heel bone is actually known as calcaneus bone. The calcaneus bone. And this is actually a left calcaneus. contrast it to this other one here. To tell the difference of left and right, the large part of the heel comes to the posterior, and this little dip thing that comes up here, I'm going to just show you, think of your arch of your foot, it's on the medial aspect. That's just to orient a left from a right This is the left side compared to a right one.